Jeff can uh, convert more freely and with each other. They also can even just That is okay. Please. So as you guys come, um, we can start from here so that at least we are not so many, so that everyone gets a chance to say their name, their account, and their estimate. Will you remember that? Your name, your account, and your estimate. So that the next time you'll be speaking, you'll now be able to tell us a little more in three minutes. When you get a chance to speak, you'll speak for like six minutes, so that others also get a chance to speak. Right? So, as you can see from the schedule, I'll first introduce you to the network, and then we'll have like four guest speakers who will speak about four particular SDGs, as you saw on the description of this event, and then there will be a very brief Q&A session, after which now we'll have our input from everyone else who is, who also I believe is a guest, because all of us are guests to this event, so we have something to say, and we need to say it. So after that we can begin from here, yeah. and procedure is the same again, accounting and the very fast so that we can start so that the rest can see you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nilda Lachot. I am from Nairobi County. It's a county, right? Yes. Born and raised here. Born and raised here. And my STG is Estimate Mobility. Yeah. 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 Ye
people, uh, we have very many other sectors that are trying to engage with this. So I'm very glad to be here and to join the world and to motivate you that uh, we need to go with the direct of the rest of the Thank you very much, Ms. Florence, and you are welcome to this. Um, so I'll go straight ahead and do a very brief presentation about what Champions for SDGs is all about, which will bring you up to speed so that you don't feel like um, we are doing something very new. the voices of young people to educate them on the reason why we should take the initiative of contributing towards sustainable development and giving them a platform to access opportunities to make a difference in their communities in their own little means, however small it can be, it can actually make a difference. So the first slide is for the 17 SDGs, which you might also see displayed up there. Some of you might know all of them, but it's also an opportunity for those of you who do not know um, the SDGs so that you can familiarize yourself with them. So, the SDGs came about from a United Nations declaration um, that, that came about uh, after the MDGs, which were up to 2015, and when the heads of state and government high representatives at the United Nations headquarters met from 25th to 27th September 2015, they actually decided on the SDGs that we continue to talk about now until 2030. Um, they committed as you can see in the quote, that we are committed to achieving sustainable development in the dimensions of economic, social, and environmental in a balanced and integrated manner. Further, <coughs> they resolved that between 2015 and 2030, that they shall end poverty, hunger and war, and also combat inequalities within and among countries to build peaceful, just and inclusive societies and to protect human rights and protect gender equality. Gender equality has been a huge topic and gender equality usually cuts across all the SDGs <coughs> because we need to be very sensitive of um, access to opportunities that we give to both young boys and young girls, men and women. Um, and also the empowerment of women and girls to ensure that lasting protection of the planet and its natural resources. They also resolved to create conditions for sustainable, inclusive and sustained um, economic growth with shared prosperity and decent work for all taking into account different levels of national development and capacities. So I don't want to bore you with a lot of um, writing. Um, as I said, the Champions for SDGs, which is a youth led network that is bringing together like-minded young people to contribute meaningfully towards the realization of a future in which all of them are able, are informed, economically empowered, and actively takes part in global development issues, regardless of, the, of where they come from, or even their economic status, and also regardless of their gender. Our objectives, number one, is to provide a platform for young people to actually speak up and contribute to uh, global sustainable development by active participation. Also to link 
youth champions with opportunities to make a difference in their communities. And through inspirational people who are also doing something in their communities. As you might learn, when we get to interact, you learn that the people you are seated with are people who will actually inspire. And also to their leading youth network of young people that is creating positive change in the community in our country and across the globe. So today we'll be talking about five particular SDGs and the central one is quality education. You realize that the theme of this year's International Youth Week or International Youth Day is quality, it's, it's speaking on quality education. However, we'd like to also speak about good health and well-being, climate action and reduced inequalities. So, um, like two months ago, we had our first forum in this same place, in this same room. And these are pictures from that forum where we were able to exchange ideas and see how we can actually do something for the community, assist ourselves and also assist other young people. Um, this week is International Youth Week. I know all of you are aware of it, or most of you are aware of it, and the team, the, and the team, sorry, as I said, is transforming education. Um, and it highlights, it highlights the efforts to make education more inclusive and accessible to all young people, including efforts of us, young people ourselves. So um, it will also examine how young people and youth led organizations and youth focused organizations as well as other stakeholders, the way they are transforming education so that it becomes a powerful tool towards achieving agenda 2030. So um, the youth dialogue shall set pace and contribute towards this particular conversation that we are having this week. So the, next, the network is composed of 50 youth champions as at now, and a larger social network. Our main channels being uh, starting from Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and then YouTube. YouTube was created three days ago, and we intend to create very informative content that will inform young people and encourage them to contribute towards sustainable development and do something for their community. Um, just by them. We have Wi-Fi, which you can use to tweet and also express your views online, especially on Twitter. Um, I've placed um, particular uh, particular uh, uh, indicators here that you can use to see our 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 handles, so that when you post something, you can tag and then you will share. We usually do our official communications through the network's Google group, which is champions for SDGs at googlegroups.com, so that when we send something there, everyone in the network just receives the information. Um, we urge everyone to keep an eye on our online platforms because we are always sharing um, even opportunities from other organizations to make your lives better or to educate you or give you access to opportunities as we mentioned in the objectives. There's also a Champions for SDGs Google Calendar, which usually has international days and other avenues and events for young people to learn and make a difference in their life. So with that being said, I need you to realize that we all have a role to play. As much as the governments have a role to play, we also have a role to play. And now we'll go into the contributions of four guest speakers <coughs> who will speak about um, particular SDGs. Um, maybe we could start by Yvonne, and Yvonne, you'll have like seven minutes. Please keep time because by four, we need to be out of here, and we need all of you to also speak. We need to hear your voices, right? We don't want um, an occasion whereby you came 
also in here and are not able to air out your views. Right? So let's hear from Yvonne Uchen <coughs> on SDG3 and how education can be used to realize SDG3. I'm there. You can come here to that. Good afternoon, So, I, like I said, my name is Yvonne Uchen. I would say I'm a I sort of like cut across most of the things because I work with a I a youth led organization that is based in Geneva. And uh, before that, I've been so much involved in the good health and well being uh, in different programs such as uh, sexual reproductive health and rights and now on mental health because we all know mental health is such a big thing in this country and in the world and there's so much focus on that. So um, throughout Throughout, I won't say my career, but um, <coughs> when I started, uh, it's quite interesting. When I started first, I, I started during the MDGs when we still had uh, the Millennium Development Goals. And I remember I went for an extent program uh, that was organized by Norwegian Peace Corps. And part of the tour that we were doing in different countries, we had Kenya, we had, uh, we had Norway, we had Sri Lanka. So we went throughout. And we traveled, at times we even had to sleep in baths, in classrooms and things like that, trying to get leaders and policy makers to, to talk about the new, by then it was new sustainable development goals that were going to come up. And also to talk about where is the funding going to come from. When we, have, we now have 17 from the previous one that we had about, I don't know, seven or something like that. So how, how is that going to be funded? So, um, and right now, uh, so many young people who've been, uh, who are taking the lead in different aspects of the SDGs. But now today I want to talk a bit about the good health and well-being and relate it to this day as a youth, because I'm still, I'm still a youth. <laughs> All right. So, um, being, one thing is that uh, being a youth or being a young person, you have some uh, you know your needs, you're the expert of your own life, and at times it can also be like uh, the government needs to do this, I'm not supposed to do this. So there's always that, uh, that confusion between being a young person and uh, working together with other stakeholders. So when you talk about good health and well-being, you realize that uh, when you, uh, on SRHR, you get that the most, peop uh, the most people that are, are affected are these young people. We have high teenage pregnancies, we get... Uh, high mortality rates among these young people, we get young people still being the same people who are affected or infected by HIV and other STIs. When it comes to mental health, you still find that the same young people, by the time you get to 25, most of the mental illnesses have, have come up already. So you see that being a young person is sort of like a burden. And if it's not looked into, if the young people are not uh, empowered or educated, because at times, uh, we can't just wait for problems to happen and then say, oh, we are going to bring care or we are going, we're going to treat them. Because at times, it has to start from promoting health. And how do you promote health? One is to come up with the ed education as a, as a key component, but not just education, bringing young people together in one room and saying things like this. It has to be structured in a way that we, only, we not only give knowledge, but we also give skills to these young people in order for them to be able to protect and promote their health. It could be, as, uh, it could be something like organizing trainings and ensuring that we have uh, SRHR, telling young people, empowering young people on ways they can protect themselves not to get infected by STIs. It could be, when it comes to mental health, it could be something that uh, you empower these young people because when you talk about good health and well-being, it's not just you being seen there, it means that you have to live a productive life. It means that you are able to contribute meaningfully to your society. And it means that you are able to cope up with challenges, everyday challenges that comes across in your life. So how can young people be being involved, for young people to be involved in this, as I was saying before, education definitely. And it has to be structured, it has to be youth-centered, it has to be looked into uh, by the young, the young people need to be there at the forefront, and they need to ask for it. 
Because at times, being a young person, you always sit at the back and say, what are we around? But let me just tell you, like, uh, there's something that is that happened to me this week. I started a new a new job, and it has really been sort of like hard. I'm like, this is what young people want. This is what they've been saying. And then you have this group of uh, adults who say, oh, this is how we work. This is the traditional way that we want to work. <coughs> so there's this clash, and uh, you're sort of like torn in between, of, in, between on saying, if I do this, then I, I just know that we're wasting our time. But if I do this, then it will seem that I'm not being respectful, I'm not conforming to what, uh, what the organization wants. So uh, right now, I just decided my, uh, my role and my allegiance is to these young people. And uh, regardless of what we want to do, I'm just going to shake the tables. Because that is what we want to do. We want to be able to achieve good health and well-being amongst young people, not pleasing <coughs> these adults. But I don't say that we can't work in partnerships. We need to find a point where we come together with all stakeholders, with all other civil society NGOs, with the government agencies, with the UN agencies, so that we are all able to work together in order for us to achieve good health and well-being. Because we can do it all. <coughs> and that is all I have to say. Makofitana. So I would like to I would like to invite Brian Miehera to come and speak for four minutes about education. <coughs> Please keep it brief. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You good? Yeah. Um, how many of you never say that when I grow up, I want to be a doctor? I want to be a pilot. I want to be these big courses or other programs. Almost everybody. These are the same voices that are being echoed by our brothers back in primary, in high school, and even in the university, which is so bad. Uh, education is being facilitated by educators. In this case, we can call them teachers, right? Are we together? But now, nobody has ever said that I want to be a teacher at a lower age. Nobody. Really. A teacher or teaching comes after failing what you wanted to be. Am I wrong? Yeah, that's the thing, right? So, we find that, finally, uh, somebody who scored an A cannot deliberately go to for teaching. And somebody who scored a C, C minus, and even D are welcome. Come, come, we'll offer these teaching courses, right? <laughs> and this person is going to teach a doctor, an engineer, something that he wanted to be and failed to be, right? Mm. Okay. In this instance, is it fair? Why can't we value teaching? Why can't you give attention to teachers? Why can't the government even decide today and say for you to go for teaching, you must go an A, you must go an A minus, you must go a B plus? Why can't teachers never be paid the same salary as the doctors can be paid, the, the, the engineers, the pilots? A pilot can save 100 people in the crew. An engineer can construct a large building that can accommodate thousands of, thousands of people. A doctor can save somebody's life. But a teacher can take a tender, nothing, from nothing, a brain tender, mold it to something. Why can't we value teaching first to, in order to achieve quality education? That's my first point. Two, is it a must that we must go to class in order to get education? I don't think. I think my father was educated and he never went to class. He was taught how to weave baskets, and up to date, he's still weaving. He showed me how to weave, and I can weave. But it's so unfortunate that here in Kenya, specifically in Kenya, we have several uh, uh, institutions for higher learning, universities. They offer uh, medicine, they offer engineering, they offer all these courses. Unfortunately enough, when we want to build like a super highway, we have to import somebody from somewhere to come and do architect work. 
Unfortunately, that if the diseases are too much, we fly to India. And in the same, same fields, we have doctors who are, uh, yeah, people have, have, have graduated to be doctors, others are professors in the same field. I mean, we just being fed papers and pen. You're just, uh, uh, I, I mean, you get the merit by scoring an A, not a practical thing. As I can say that my father is educated than more professors <coughs> in Kenya, not because he is a uh, 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 paper and pen better, but he is worse in paper and pen, but practically is okay. Okay? So, like, for example, I'm a computer security forensic student. It's so unfortunate that I have a lot of A's in my transcript, which I cannot actually prove them well when brought to the field. You see, it's so, so unfortunate. Um, just to go to, maybe my time is almost over. It is over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. Let, let me just say this. I would like to uh, urge you, you know, that we should uh, come together and support Professor Magoha in competency-based curriculum. Let's just not go to class and be fed, fed, fed. I mean, a class has been, has been acting as a robot feeder where we are, you are fed to chemistry, mathematics, biology, for no good reason. Thank you very much. I God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, so, at this point, I'd like to invite um, Ms. Prez so that you can come and just um, use three to five minutes to at least share with us um, something concerning SDG 3, 4, 10, and 13, maybe. Because I know you are able to interact with all of them in a way as we wait for the next speaker. Thank you very much. So, uh, as I said before, uh, my name is Fodo Salaf and I'm glad to see Alvin. Uh, Alvin and I and many others have been talking in Kenya. So it was very good uh, for the invitation. Thank you very much. And I think moving forward, we will interact more and more. And so, for those that I did, when I did introduce myself to the world in there, my name is Florence Yeho from the SDG Forum of the country. And so the forum started in uh, 2016, March. We launched in 2016, March, after the SDGs. Uh, as uh, previous speaker said, uh, we were part of the post-2015 process. Uh, that is the process that I was talking about, uh, the next development agenda. I'm sure you all have heard of the MDGs, the eight goals, and uh, the kind of things they need to kind of. And maybe, I think that's the kind of history you're going to give some good history. Yeah. Uh, the MDGs, for example, uh, we'll talk about free primary education when Moit Baki became president, and there was uh, a manifesto uh, within that particular government. Primary education is a proof of the Millennium Development Goals. Uh, this, uh, when you hear about uh, the issues about uh, um, Goal 3, and now at least uh, the Beyond Zero campaign, and the current uh, uh, sort of uh, progress that's been made about uh, us, maternity, uh, free maternity health, and so forth. These are those uh, aspirations that are within the MDGs. Why this development agenda are very critical is that uh, from the global perspective, they give uh, countries and regional uh, spaces the ability to be able to uh, come together with a holistic agenda to de for, de for development as, as Kenyans, as uh, Africa, and then as a the, as the globe. Uh, is always the custodian of this and uh, uh, the aspirations behind uh, the whole process. Yeah? Uh, but now maybe to bring it home is that uh, Kenya, uh, the SDG uh, implementation process lies within the ministry, now they call themselves, of course before it was the Ministry of Devolution and Planning, yeah? uh, but right now after the current, uh, just the past elections, we're talking about national treasury and state planning. So within the state planning, there's a, uh, a department called S, which is chaired by the state planning, and within that it's a multi stakeholder. Uh, committee that brings together uh, government, uh, the NDS, uh, brings together civil society, private sector, uh, academia, and the various uh, stakeholders within the country. And so uh, uh, we are part of that, and uh, the SDG Kenya Forum is uh, a co-chair with KEPSA, with the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, 
And so for the first time, you can see the kind of vision that Kenya is holding on to in terms of bringing different stakeholders. It's not just a government agenda. Within that also we have a <coughs> representation, we have the academia, media, and so forth. So I think uh, so far a lot has been done in Kenya, but of course much more needs to be done to ensure that now the implementation process speaks at grassroots level. Apart from implementation that goes on within the different sectors, could it be private sector, could it be academia, could it be government, the, uh, the, the, the kind of budgets that exist within national processes, that talk about health, that talk about peace and security, that talk about climate action, that talk about all these different things, urbanization, the cities and so forth. Uh, there's a process that was not there within the MDGs. And this is the voluntary national reviews, the reporting system. Uh, before uh, MDGs were just implemented, but there was no uh, voluntary national reviews. This process particularly uh, is open to countries every year in July, which happens in New York. It's called the, the High Level Political Forum. And so during then, countries volunteer themselves to report, to say at national level, as Kenya, as Uganda, as South Africa, as the United States of America, this is the process we've been doing. And this is how far we've gone, these are the challenges, and these are the aspirations we have as a country. And so Kenya reported in 2017 just maybe a year or so after the SDG adoption. And so uh, after that, uh, the good thing, uh, once you report, is sort of you evaluate your process and uh, maybe lay in between processes that uh, are central. And so uh, that process is ongoing. Uh, this year also Kenya prepared a report, it's called the Biannual Report on SDGs. And all these are accessible, eh? and so maybe through the organizers I'll be able to share some of this material. And also, if you go to our website, there's a, there's a lot more you could also find on the SDG process in Kenya. And so mine here uh, is just uh, to really encourage you during this International uh, uh, Youth uh, Week uh, for us uh, to really amplify youth voices to ensure that young people, for example, if you're talking about education, uh, what is the role of education in uh, aspirations of development? What are the gaps that exist within the current education system? How do we, uh, for example, amplify our voices to the current CS and ensure that some of these processes are well done, yeah? On health issues of health, when you talk about uh, young people accessing uh, health, uh, health services, this is the one uh, group that uh, in many ways there are a lot of inequalities. And there are a lot of young people out here, maybe without resources, without uh, having uh, what, uh, maybe the income, and when they get sick or when they, are, they want to access medication, it's almost impossible. If you're a young person and you're not working and maybe your parents are retired or they're not able to support you, and it's, it's really, really difficult. Again, we have a, yeah, a very big <coughs> youth bulge in this country. Uh, very able people. We have very young people who are able, who have uh, education, who have the energy, the skill, but again, the opportunities are as limited or they're not accessible. Yeah. So how do we as Kenyans, as young people in Kenya, come up with a united front to ensure that we can uh, take over this nation? We are told that we are the leaders of tomorrow. Yeah. It's not about that. It's about us leading now. What are the opportunities? What are the strategies? Can we, how can we lead and ensure that our voices are heard? Yeah? When we get into the processes of government process, I've had critics, people say young people, when they get in there, they forget their fellow young people, yeah? So how do we ensure that we change some of these narratives? How do we showcase young people who are leaders and who are doing great things like yourselves sitting here? You're all here because you care, yeah? You're here all here because you're leaders right now, not of tomorrow, but just right now, yeah? And so uh, when I look at all uh, these uh, issues of inequality, that was called 10 again, yeah. uh, they, uh, we are the ones to voice, we have social media. Young people are very creative uh, in terms of uh, creativity, uh, to bringing out our messages strong. How do we, uh, for example, highlight issues of inequalities? And you know inequality is about, uh, within that particular goal, it's about inequality among countries, but also inequality within the country. So among countries is the current status of developed countries and developing countries, but also the current status within our country, yeah, where different regions, where different counties, where uh, even at national level or uh, capital cities, where there's also the, the big gap between the rich and the poor. Yeah? So how do we start talking about some of these things? And then I saw also the climate change action, uh, climate action. Yeah, very, this is one goal that we strongly believe that young people uh, or have a solution to issues of climate action. Yeah? So when you talk about, uh, you know, like I've seen a lot of initiatives of planting trees, 
young people to, uh, talking about or criticizing or just affirming some of the processes that need to be done at national level. So how do we, as young people, understand these processes, but also, more importantly, show our value, yeah, create value in terms of these processes. So if you're not seen as just young people who are, you know, just they are idling or, uh, you know, just not really understanding the processes or not really caring. But I think we have a role to really uh, ensure that young people, the youth movement that takes up some of these issues and really voices them and takes uh, their charge in terms of some of the processes. Yeah. So I believe uh, there's so much that uh, needs to be done. And uh, with time, we'll be able to build capacity. We'll be able to uh, engage some of you in the different processes. And also, uh, when you see, as she said, uh, there are many global processes. That's one thing I'd say of young people. I see a lot of uh, calls, you know, young people doing this uh, all over the world, not just Kenya. So do not uh, limit yourself to just around. Uh, be on the, as you guys are always on you know, social media, you know, effectively how to utilize that. Uh, make your brand, utilize your space, uh, you know, get to know what's going on all over the world. Apply, you know, for these processes, apply for short courses, apply for, you know, all these, there, there, there are lots and lots of opportunities at any given time. I see, and they even have age uh, caps like, we're looking for people who are below 30. We're looking for people who are, you know, this and this age. So encourage your constituencies to really take up some of these uh, great opportunities. And so uh, from us, I think uh, it's just to uh, show, uh, to sort of really support this process and uh, to say that uh, as we move forward, we'll be able to uh, maybe uh, see how we can collaborate further. But thank you very much for this invitation. I really, uh, I started off as a young person. I started off as an intern. I came out of school straight to uh, it's good to tell you my story, so that you can, you know, sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's good to give a background of where, you, where you're passionate and where you're coming from. I was at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa, and then uh, I was doing uh, social work then, and uh, one of the things was that uh, it was compulsory for you to do an attachment. Uh, from, I think, yeah, to, uh, from uh, second year to all the way to fourth year. And I used to go for those attachments, you know, go to you know, different places, the slums, just anywhere, this community-based organization. And I found myself in everywhere, in, in all these very nice uh, community-based organizations. And uh, the last internship I went for, it was a youth organization. And uh, really, they had they were talking about MDGs, and it was a big process, and I was very vibrant in that. When I got in there, we were like five of us, and personally, I was really passionate with one other person. And uh, one of the things that happened is, after we finished our university, uh, this particular organization had entered us. They really came for us, you know, and said, sorry, sorry. They came back to us and said, uh, you know, can you take up this, 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 this entry jobs, yeah? And so uh, that's how I started off, you know, just as a young person and with this process here. And then I looked back, I've been in the MDGs and now I'm in the SDGs, uh, championing collective decisions and uh, policy, political, economic, and social uh, processes. And uh, understanding that and really, uh, been out there, you know, and this time you find yourself in very many uh, critical spaces, uh, you know, telling the agenda and really bringing people together, creating unity and providing spaces for people to express themselves, but more importantly, to take over processes that could lead to social change, yeah? And so I want to really encourage you that uh, uh, let's do this as young people. Let's never not give up. Let's not sit back there and say, oh, wow, I have no space. I, have, I can't do this, you know? As long as you're vibrant, as long as you take the space, things work for you. Yeah. So uh, let me stop there. I can really talk. <laughs> yeah, so thank you very much. And uh, I really am glad to be here. Thank you. Actually, um, on that note, and from the State Department of Planning, we were able to get these materials for us to read. So after this, everyone of you will get a copy of this and another flyer so that you can go and read more about it. Don't stop there. Go online and read more and learn more about what is there for you to do about SDGs. Um, now I'd like to invite Antonia Musunga. Um, she has a brief video that will talk about inequalities and then she will speak very briefly about inequalities because all of us want to speak. Right? Yes. So, Anthony, Antonia, welcome. Okay. I'll play the video first. <laughs> so, maybe we can play the video first.
she's inaudible. So I request that you kindly speak briefly about it as I ask for the remote. Okay. Hi, my name is Antonia Tsonga. I coordinate Amalas called the Fighting Palestine Alliance. Uh, I'm here to ask the question about the we are a collective of civil society organizations, NGOs, CBOs, national NGOs, international NGOs, and, and activists and young people, old people. It's a space for everyone, really. And, and what we do at the alliance level is we talk about inequality from a personalized perspective. We know there's a goal on reducing inequalities. But our premise is that unless we are able to tell what our experience of inequality has been, it will be impossible for us to actually champion for other things, right? You can only ask for what you don't have if you know what you don't have. You can only demand for better if you know <laughs> where you are, what is wrong with what, where you are currently. And so when, when Arnold asked me to speak about reduced inequalities in reference to education, I, I started thinking of how my own journey of how I started uh, working on inequality. And, and growing up, I, like I said in my introduction, I come from Kitui County. And I remember when I was in class two, our head teacher said uh, all lower primary schools, no class two and class three people should be coming to school at 10 a.m. All morning people were excited. All and morning people were excited because you get to sleep, you have breakfast, you don't have to run around in the morning to get to school in good time. But the reason why I was, what that was said is because we did not have enough classes. So we'd come in at 10 a.m., sit and at 3, so that class 1 and class in nursery school, when they go home, we enter the rooms where they had been used because they would leave school at around midday. And growing up, I didn't think. I don't know, it wasn't a big deal, right? We were all there, all of us didn't have books, or some of us had books, some others didn't have books. Some people were coming to school in timelines, in different timelines. <coughs> we didn't think of it as being a big deal. Um, which brings me to the other point. I don't know if there's anyone here who's ever thought poverty is a result of people not working hard, or they're not smart about their money, or it's a way to live, right? We've all had that narrative. And it, it, it brings to mind the other day when there was a bunch of people in government who were on a panel talking about youth and employment, and they were saying the youth should start businesses. How many of us have tried opening up? How many? How many? What kind of permits do you need? What is the minimum that of work at a UV? Is there any business you can do without permits in this country? Is there any business you can do without asserting capital to grow your business? Where are young people supposed to get that money? Right? We are all young here. We know, we know the struggle, right? So I'll invite you to watch this video briefly and then I'll continue talking from there. Thank you. Zero point one percent owns as much as ninety nine percent of Kenyan population. This means eight thousand three hundred people are more are richer than forty four million people in Kenya. That is inequality in Kenya. I want my government to fight inequality. But listening to Wanjiko, Wanjiko has a solution for what Wanjiko wants. We don't diagnose issues from an individual level and we don't provide solutions from an individual level. We just want to put everybody in a box and then make sure that people work so hard to try to call number one. That's why eventually you have only 1,600 billionaires in the country because you always get that call number, number one. So that's what inequality has done, that where we're at your position as somebody who lives in a whatever situation, I must stay somewhere, the farthest part of the world, you don't feel like your voice is being heard. 
So that's what we invite is we're using music and art to try to view conversation, to share experiences in this space. But globally, to connect now the organization that so that we of course to amplify your voice. As it is in Kenya, inequality is a problem globally. And uh, we've seen that in Kenya, uh, many women are not allowed to own land. Women's rights on land issues should be articulated and brought closer and make sure that women also own land and have resources that is uh, available and for them. What I want my government to do is to make sure that the constitution sees that everybody achieves and celebrates their rights. And, and the little way I wanted to show you that video is just to bring to, to your attention that inequality, there are different stories of how people have experienced inequality, but the challenge is the same. And what as, uh, as a person I believe in, if someone is wealthy, they have access to opportunities, they have access to money. It means they, are, they also have access to power. Um, last year, when we at uh, the Alliance level interrogated what the government was proposing on taxation, we realized things like helicopter parts are imported in the country tax Do you know what else is taxed? Do you know what, what helicopter parts are tax free? But books, medicine, Sanitary towels, <coughs> the tax, they, they are usually taxed. Yeah? So what does that mean when the government taxes the things we, we interact with? They, I, I'll give an example. If you're a mother and you're buying school books for your children, it means you're paying tax. If you have mother, you are a mother <laughs> of a daughter, it means you're buying school books and sanitary parts. So you're paying tax for that also. So you're basically paying tax for things that you, you will continuously buy. So what does it mean in terms of breaking the ceiling of ending poverty, right? It means people will continue paying higher prices for things that they need to survive on their daily life. We also, and, and, and the thing, and, and to link it to education really, I think one of the things as young people we should purpose to do as, um, as everyone else has retaliated is to unlearn and relearn what we do. There's so many things that we've been taught that are problematic, that do not help us in any way. That it's sort of, we are just going through a phase until we get to positions of power and continue perpetuating the very things that affected us when we were younger. Am I making sense? Yeah. And so how do we question things, issues that happen to us from a youth perspective? How do we say this is working? and this is not working and so we don't want whatever is not working or this is how we can fix it it can only through by extensively understanding our context one as a lot of people who are in this room are going to school to some certain level one thing i know we have a problem as young people is when we go to school and join the corporate world we start saying you know even by activism and politics i don't do truth of the matter is that is what people who are older than us do. And if we want to do anything different, we must purpose to use our privilege of education to talk to other people. I, I recently had um, a meeting with young people this last week, and we were asking ourselves, you know when, when, when people say, come on, talk, and they talk, you know, hang out with older men, be friends with older women. It's because these people talk about the things that affect their lives. They will tell each other, I am going to meet these MCA to partner with them on this project. But see, when we meet, what are we talking about? Not to say our conversations are useless. They are very important. But how can we go deeper and deeper? <laughs> how can we go and deeper and deeper to realize, yes, oh, the, the conversation on, on how women in the dating scene exploit men, what, is, what does it look like in a bigger context? Yeah? Please conclude. Yeah. Please <laughs> have a little speaker. And so, and the last thing I'd like to say is also um, identify opportunities to engage it effectively. Figure out who's doing what, plugging into those processes. I, I find that very many people are trying to create these friendly spaces. 
But if you're not there, your interest will not be represented. Thank you. So I also there's something I wanted to say after Miss Florence spoke and I forgot. Uh, we'd also like to um, give the young people within our space materials which they can read and be aware of what other people are doing or what's happening. And in case you are in a position to share such material, we have the young people you've seen here, they will be happy to receive and also to read about SDG. Right? Yeah. Mm. So I'd like to welcome Deo Gracias Maguero to speak about quality education very briefly. Very briefly. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Very briefly, it's like I should introduce myself. <laughs> <laughs> My name alone is a prayer. My name is Deo Gracias. I well, I work at Emerging Leaders Foundation as a Chief Operating Officer. I also work at a global organization as an Africa Partnerships Manager. It's called uh, Youth Career Initiative. And I'm a youth. I'm very proud to be a youth. And so as a youth, I have a background in education, strategy, and business development. So when you talk about education, I have been privileged to be a high school teacher for a couple of years of my life. But then today, I want to mention something to you in relation to education not academic. And this is what we call the uselessness of your degree, if you have one. Yes. <laughs> Today, when Safaricom is hiring for an IT person, they are not looking for your degree. They are looking for your ability to code, your ability to build and secure data, which is a data scientist, for example. I had a privilege to work with an organization, actually a company called Moringa School. Some of us have heard about it. Yeah. They train software developers, basically coding. And in that class of coding, we had a D-plus from Fort Liver and a graduate from KU Computer Science, sitting on the same laptop, learning how to code. And after that, they are connected to employment. And the employer is not looking for that paper, asking which, you know, which level of first class or second class they got. The employer is asking, what can you do? And so today, I just want to speak about two sides to education. What is your definition of quality education as a young person? Is it how far you have gone? And I have a problem, this is my personal opinion, with people who go and do degree, then they come and look for work and it's not there, and they say, now let me go do masters, and they come back and now they're at another level, and then they say, let me do PhD, maybe it's gonna help. <laughs> if you haven't utilized the skills you learned in your masters or in your degree, then I feel like, take a step, ask yourself what is happening, what is the gap? And the reality is there's a big gap in our educational, you know, conventional education in Africa. But what do we need to do about it? That goes back to SDG4, Provided and Sustainable Development Goals. I ask every young person when they come to interview some of the organizations that worked, what can you offer? Why do you deserve this job? One young man came and said, I deserve this job because I have a master's from UN. And I'm like, okay, now tell me. And he was like, he's done. <laughs> so my question, my, my other this contribution is, the world owes you nothing as a young person, regardless of the shit you've gone through to earn that degree. Okay? The world owes you nothing. The fact that you've got an A does not guarantee you anything in this world. Because if you want to follow the normal path, I would be a teacher somewhere, uh, probably with a picky picky, working on TSC, working with TSC. But I said, this is not going to work for me. I think I have something big. I respect that I went to school, I respect that I got a good grade and got to campus. I did education science. I probably should speak about biology and chemistry. So I did <laughs> But no, the world owed me nothing. And I said, I'm going to create my path. And still utilize education. So go back to what is your definition of education? That is number one. And what is quality education for you? Quality education for me is not being a tourist or a tour guide. A tour guide is a computer science graduate, just using that example, who will tell you everything about computers and how to do things. But then you tell them now, can you please do it? It's like, no, I can teach you how to do it. That's a tour guide. Knows everything but cannot do it. <laughs> and unfortunately, that is what the education system teaches us. Yeah. You know? You are a teacher, but then you're told, you know, one of your students has a challenge. Uh, the mother and the father fought. Can you please advise him? Like, oh. No, he's a good condition can pass. <laughs> the reality is we'll never be told, right? Excuse me. <laughs> what am I saying? That today I just want to challenge you because I think I have three minutes. So. 
Let me read fast. No. Okay. <laughs> I'll add one more if you allow me. Okay. When you talk about quality education, let's redefine quality education. And think about what are the opportunities that lie in quality education. Considering that the globe and the world has come together to push for this. Yesterday we were at the UN. And people are talking about quality education and around the social justice, the role of education and everything. And I said, at what point in your high school and primary, if you've done 16 years, you're lucky, were you ever taught to define corruption? And at what point were you told that there's an opposite of corruption? And at what point were you told that there's a value system you need to stand for? I wasn't taught anything. And I didn't realize there was a value and a vice until I learned, oh, corruption. Ah, okay, man, I, I gotta be you know, corrupt for me to fit in the society. So for me, I say education has a significant role, but it has to be transformed by the young people seated here and the people you work with and the constituencies you're representing here. Okay? That you define your own path. Use education as a platform. But regardless of your level of education, the world owes you nothing. Right? Mm -hmm. And that means you have to go out there. And if you're in campus, you need to learn a skill. I never used to know how to speak. Until somewhere in third year, I joined a club and I was asked to be an MC of an event. I'm like, man, I'm in university material, man. I just want to sit back and do my chemistry. My and they told me you're going to do it. They just pushed the way this guy is going to go. That transformed my life forever. And I appreciate that they're doing that part. What are you doing when you're in a class or in a school? Away from waking up at five or rather at six, and sometimes if you're in campus, you only have four lessons in a week. <laughs> and then you're complaining, and you know, that's why some guys were striking yesterday. You know, I passed from you and I passed the look a bit, and then I saw some tires. And was a, some guy was asking me, so these guys were striking, what is it? I told them they're idle. You only have four lessons or six lessons in a week. You guys are lucky you came here. This is education. I went to church. Uh, I should say I also wanted to be a priest. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'll quote a Bible and then I finish with what I wrote here. Okay? But Proverbs chapter 4, if you read the Bible, verse 13 says, Your education is your life. Guard it well. It does not mean that the certificates you have, you guard them well so that water does not get to them. <laughs> it means that if you can learn anything in your experience of life, that is it. Okay? There are so many things that happen in organizations. Today you cram, you cram calculus, you cram formulas, and then you go and you're told you are an intern, welcome. You graduated, yes, second upper, good. Please, key in the Excel in this data. And you're like, there was no unit on Excel. <laughs> and then there's a friend of yours who was doing SPSS courses, data entry, and you're like this guy. I'm doing my degree. Why is he wasting time over the weekend doing SPSS? You get my point, data entry. On the other side of the world, nobody cares about what your paper says. You can do it, you can't do it, we keep moving. Get my point? Mm -hmm. And so SDG number four basically has a number of themes that I just want to mention. The first one is education for sustainable development. And I just want to challenge you. How do you localize and customize sustainable development to yourself? What is development and what is quality education for you? Because tomorrow I'm worried of taking my daughter to a school where they're going to cram, you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> air for apple and B for boy. Yeah. And then after that, we are taught parts of an insect. And then you come on this side, and somebody is asking you, are you with me? But who is going to change this? We can sit at KICD, Kenya, you know, Institute yeah. of Curriculum Development, and say CBC and everything. But I have to take my path. And you as a young person, you need to take your path. Number two, one of the themes is availability of skilled workforce. That's what I would like to talk about. What does skilled workforce mean? Why can't we just say availability of a workforce? We have a workforce. Even in parliament, we have a workforce. <laughs> but they will discuss nothing and sleep until a mother shows up with a baby. Yeah. And then now you realize they were working. Nonsense. What am I saying? What is your skill? Are you a workforce? Are you skilled? If you're, if, if, if you're going to say you're skilled, so you apply for a job, and then they ask, okay, um, what can you do? I you know I'm right now pursuing my PhD, so you know I'm very well educated. <laughs> touch it. I ask young people, can you touch what you can do? Come and tell me I can do data entry, I can do access and develop something, I can speak and present this which I've developed. And when you talk about IT and computer science, previously there was a lie that if I'm a computer scientist, I just sit in the dark room and do my things and develop applications. It's one thing to develop, it's another thing to sell that application. Those skills have to matter. What is your skill as a workforce? Capacity building, of course, is what you're trying to do right now, thanks to Andrew and the rest of us. Building our capacities beyond you know, normal um, class work and everything. Of course, indirect impact to job creation. Job creation has two perspectives. 
You're either looking for a job or building an opportunity that will create another job. Okay? It doesn't have to be an entrepreneurship. Go to your village and ask, what is the greatest thing that people are suffering from? Why are people doing Arabe for churches every day? Since you were born, that church was being built. What is the problem? <laughs> and then lastly is youth employment. And I mean, we've talked about youth employment for the longest time. What is your definition of employment? Get okay, my point? These days I have trouble with what to a Biashara, you know, Biashara funds, Wazel fund and everything. And I ask, why are you giving him two million and giving this lady one million? What is the criteria? Uh, we work on a business plan. For me, I say, what job opportunities is this person creating? They deserve that funding. And now, what opportunities lie in SDG4? And this I'm throwing at you to start something beyond this conversation. Okay? Guided by your global provisions. Number one, try and establish relationships with government entities and other high, higher education, higher, sorry, higher learning institutions to improve education curricula so that it is aligned with business needs. What are we saying? You are in the world right now. You know what is lacking and what is happening. Have you taken a moment and gone back even to your primary school or your secondary school or your campus and started a program that, you know, enlightened those guys on the reality of man? If you can't write your CV very well, nobody will see. If you can't speak in an interview and present yourself the right way, these days we even have trouble with the way people dress up. You know, dot com, they tell me I don't care. Come show up in an organization with your degree, for example, or your qualification, dressed up like going for a club. The world owes you nothing. Rules are set sometimes, rules are to be broken, but then strive to be at the top, right? Another opportunity that lies in the SDG4 is create programs. Programs like internships, work study programs, traineeships, that will give students earlier access to the corporate and the work environment. What are you doing? There's a program called Generation Kenya. If you've heard about it, it's run by McKinsey Company. Well, I, I'm just mentioning the program that we do this work with. They train young people of all ages, 18 to 35, on entry-level jobs. And I've seen graduates sitting together with C minus, C plus, or who never even went to campus to take the practical skills. And they all pre are presented to an employer. And an employer picks somebody who can deliver the skills. So there lies an opportunity. What initiative can you start as a young person? Create such opportunities for internships. Provide employees with continuous opportunities to improve their skills. Now I'm disoriented. No. Um, but it's fine. Yes. So I'm throwing this at you. If you start a company, think about the gaps. Are you able to upskill existing employees, existing workforces, or rather existing graduates, if there's a graduate there? And then uh, cost-effective education programs and services. If somebody who runs a platform on the phone where you can even just read, you can do an exam, you know, tests and everything for high schoolers, right? Be creative and think of that gap and create something. And lastly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> As a young person who is exposed, and you are lucky to be in Nairobi today, what is your contribution to creating a learning environment for those young people that are not as exposed as you? When I was going to school, my mom was a deputy head teacher of a primary school I went to. It was like deep in the village, six kilometers or so. Of course, everybody will say we walked on bare feet. It's not how we walked. But then that lady told me something. At home, she would cook food. She used to ride a bike. At home, she would cook food, put it in the car of the bike, because my brother would be at one school. Of course, she's riding a bike, so either to Takibia, it's about six and a half kilometers for <coughs> to leave. And then you get to school, and what happens? She's the debut head teacher. So anybody who gets in after the gate is locked, they don't know you. But it taught me one thing. But there is a contribution that has to be faithful, to be very painful for you to be sharpened to be the best. At home, she was the best mother. At school, she was the best teacher. Of course, best teachers are those that came and teach this. <laughs> right? And she told me one thing that I want to leave you with. In life, have strategy. When I asked her what she was doing, she told me that was a strategy to make you realize that you are not guaranteed anything by the fact that I'm your teacher. Mm -hmm. So when you wake up every day, wake up strategically. How did you wake up today? Was it left side, right side? I'm not just dumb. <laughs> you know, there's something you that you usually do. It's actually strategy, right? Mm -hmm. When you walk to wherever you're walking, strategically, what's the first thing you do when you wake up? That is strategy. When you go to work, you even want your desk to be in a specific place. That is strategy, right? When you go to school, you prefer, you're more comfortable in a specific place. 
Now I'm saying, even in life, post education, business and everything, without strategy, you're not gonna make it. One of the things I do, and I like doing, I've come here a number of times, is just having conversations with young people, and they call it mentorship, to try and help them strategically think about how to achieve their visions and ideas, make them a reality. And that can be a follow-up conversation we can have. Thank you so much. Thank you. You can have a seat here. So, Bryson Mallow, please come and tell us about the role of young people. Very briefly. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Bryson. My name is Mara Grayson. I saw myself with Shuheni, but I don't do that anymore. I work for an NGO called Siasa Place, and what we do at Siasa Place is we train young people how they can engage with their leaders and how they can ensure that we are working a kazi and we are working Other than that, I'm also the chairperson of Jactivet. It's a national movement for young people across the country, and what we do again is provide a platform for young people to engage on issues that matter to them. So I want to talk about the youth voice. The constitution gives us a lot of power as young people from Article 55 that talks about the youth. But the question is, what are we doing as young people to use that power that we've been given by the Supreme Law to ensure that we do good things for our community? So even as we talk about SDGs and uh, quality education and also reducing inequalities, it would be good for us as young people to ensure that we use the spaces that are provided for us to push for change. Another thing I would like to mention is about decision making. Most of the times decisions are made for us young people. We just sit at home and we are told today you have to do A, B, C, D. It's high time that we all took uh, part and took charge in decision making. One of the places that I would advise us to go and take part in decision making, especially in our counties, it's in the budget process. Because that's where most decisions are made about you and for you. So if Nairobi County wants to do an employment program, if you do not make noise when they're passing the budget, you can never be helped. We'll be sitting here each and every day talking about these processes. So it's good for us to take part in decision making. So let's go and look at the budget when they are, when they are planning, when they are doing things. Let's be there and give our voices and our inputs. Um, we need also to be agents of change, even as we push for SDGs as young people, that we should be people who push for what we believe is going to help us. To score to two or two more, you are going on the road to go and demonstrate. But if I ask you, why are you saying Akiyako, you keep quiet. I want to send you to go and watch a song by King Kaka. It's called uh, Muizim Kubwa. There is a video, 20 minutes, and then there is a song called Muizim Kubwa. Go look at it, he describes how young people are being used in the society. As you go, I'm going to pour a few to demonstrate. If you read in your body, you have to sleep, but you can't explain to your wife and your children why you went to that demonstration that day. I hope it's going to, to encourage you, even as we continue working around issues of young people. And the issue of CBC, uh, Dio mentioned about it. I'd like just to mention something. I'm passionate about issues around sexual reproductive health, and that's a campaign we are doing in Jactivate this year. It's very interesting that as young people, we need to go and interrogate the CBC and see if it captures enough issues of sexual reproductive health for young people. We talk about employment every day about us, we talk about opportunities about that, but issues of sexuality are also affecting young people. Very many young people are dropping out of school, very many young people are living with uh, HIV and AIDS, very many young people are having unwanted pregnancies. What can we do as a society to ensure that we tackle this problem that is also affecting us? Because if your life gets affected from a younger age, like what's happening in Belief in Arok and Roma Bay, just to mention, our total daughter's house in Azimo, they cannot be useful people in their society. I think that, that is all I would say. And other than that, I want you to be proud of yourselves that today on Saturday, we did not go to watch Man City play. We came here to discuss. <laughs> Let's keep doing that. Like any peer pressure to one year chance, see you. You can come and also speak very briefly. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, one, I'd like to congratulate you as youths and young men. I am a very young man, and uh, sometimes we get a lot of fights. But it is our shielding and our defense mood as young people and energy that determines where we belong in the future. Okay? <coughs> Secondly, uh, I'd like to mention one thing that uh, our gentleman over there talked about. The power of the youth. Okay? We have county governments. I represent an organization called Laikipia Huduma Machinani. I'm all the way from Laikipia. And uh, sometimes as young people, we get challenges. 
you see how big I am, Sindio. <laughs> Sometimes we go to public participation. I've ever spent a day raising my hand up, but never got time to talk about issues relating to it. Why? Because the system doesn't recognize our energies. But what do we do to change that? As like if you have machine, we've created a law and a bill that we are forwarding to the Laikipi County Government. It's called the Laikipi Equitable Development Bill. And part of it is that it gives power to the, to the public. Okay? This is where our voice is heard. This is where our voices are addressed. And this is where our taxes belong to. Okay? Past that, we are talking today about the SDGs. And uh, I would like to talk about education. Yesterday I saw a meme somewhere. You go to university, you do a degree, then you can do a degree, you can do a degree, you can do a degree, you can do a It is true. It is relatively true. I've been to campus, I went to KMTC. And uh, when I was there, for me to get, I'm from a very humble background back in Laikipia. We are from a place where schools are chimiamti. We are from where roads and uh, vehicles are camels and donkeys. And sometimes we get creative and we start doing bulls like horses. So that is where I came from. Then I found myself here. I used to go to Tanzania to get clothes so that I would hustle over weekends and get school fees. That is a position I chose for myself. Despite being in KMTC and thinking, oh, Sinaiza end up with a doctor. You know, it has to bear down to what your head is thinking. Okay? I'll tell you for a fact that smartness is not what you get in your book. Smartness <coughs> is how streetwise you are. How streetwise you are. Okay? Back to inequalities. We have so many issues in Kenya. One among them being health, and I'll mention it. Being, I, I think I'll incorporate them into inequalities and uh, the health issue. We call, we have something in uh, the health program called primary health care. The primary health care is the is the base where you go to a hospital and uh, somebody has to address your problem, or health is reaching out to you. Okay. Ni wangapi katika hiyo ni mioto wamesikia PHC? How many, how many have ever heard of PHC? How many of you have heard of UHC? Now this is where I'm bringing in the difference. When we talk about politics, we talk about solving issues on television, right? When we talk about solving issues, as Wanjiko wants, as uh, our lady here had uh, projected here, we talk about technicalities. PHC is a technical issue that affects the UHC program. When we talk about NHIF, tunaeza toa miyatano yote, sindio? Lakini utatoa miyatano wende ukose daktari. How does it help you? PHC is what gets a doctor in the, in the room. It is what gets medication in the in the hospital okay so as much as we are looking towards the future i would like to challenge you guys before we converse the idea of success can we first dig down deep the foundations of our own success okay before we converse our success i can stand here and tell you i'm successful but how successful am i if i never lay a foundation and never lift somebody else and make sure that a fellow youth stands in my gap whenever I'm not around. Please finish. <laughs> the last one, and thank you so much. <laughs> the last one I'd like to lay a challenge to you guys towards leadership. For so many times, we are told that youths can't lead. For so many days, we are told that youths can attend. But we have voices, right? Mm -hmm. We have ideologies and we are capable of bringing change. Sauti haitaki kusikika. What have you done? Zifanye nini? Zionekana. I can talk a lot and probably you can have another forum. But for now, thank you so much, guys. So, I think we have to adjust a bit because
because because time is moving and right now we get into um the the time for us also to be able to speak so i'd like to invite someone who would like to speak first uh, on the role of young people and keep it within three minutes before i'm forced to tell you to give another person a chance so please politely keep it three minutes begin with your name tell us your county the sdg which which you're focusing on maybe and you can also speak your views and give recommendations don't forget to give a recommendation please go ahead yes Good afternoon again. Um, my name is Minda Dattot. I am from Nairobi County. Uh, by profession, I am a screenwriter for the show. I'm here because I'm interested in the SDGs, because I'm a human being. <laughs> um, but I also have a small film festival. So far removed from the serious things that we are discussing, but it really isn't. Because music is a powerful tool. And rock music, for those people who like rock music here, yeah. how many people? <laughs> okay. You know how powerful that kind of music is because it addresses social issues. Yeah. So, why I've stood up is because I've listened to uh, what all the speakers have said and it has really resonated with me, um, especially that one for um, education and bringing about opportunities. What I've been doing with my own small space is anyone who's interested in either partnering or interning with me, I completely welcome them. So I just stood up to say, anyone who's interested in partnering or interning, you're very welcome to get in touch with me. I am on Twitter at R-O-F-F-E-K-E. -E. R-O-F-F-E-K-E, -E. we can discuss. I would also love to partner with, with um, Champions for SDGs and the SDGs Kenya Yes. It, I just want to partner with Eva because as I said when I was introducing myself, all the SDGs are my domain but I'm interested in the SDG 17 because I think that's how we are going to make a difference. So thank you so much for this opportunity. You're welcome. We can have the next person like to speak. Hello. Uh, my name is Admasi. I think I'll show you somewhere the meta. You are there? Yeah. Yeah. I was in that space. I'm a mentee there. Uh, so, my name is Almasi, when you know one zero. I am passionate about SDG number 10, communities yes. and equalities, and my area of specialization is the cyber spaces. I feel it's, it's, it's a place that we are neglecting highly, and if we do not take care of those spaces, let me tell you, tomorrow, we will not have to go to WhatsApp, we will not so if we do not take care of those spaces, whether we want to face it or not, technology is the future. So we cannot afford to have people teach citizenship and just because you're in a cyberspace, you're thinking, ah, I can insult someone, I can tell someone this. So I'm really passionate about that. I also feel this, there lacks digital literacy, especially among kids and among youth. And if by any chance you're introducing CBC, come on, let's face it, we must introduce technology. At least what in a lag behind, we are moving, but we are leaving technology behind. So I'm really passionate about it. So anybody who has that energy in that line, please feel free to contact me. I am welcoming partnerships and everything that comes with it. And you should join PLF, as you said. It's an amazing space. That's why I'm speaking like I am. They have really mentored me. They have taught me to stand for things that I believe in. So, just share with one another. My my part in short, please make sure that we talk about you know what people do. That's why you are here actually. Don't just walk out there. So before you sit, please tell us something about um, what you can do in regards to SDGs. Okay, in regards to SDGs, I keep saying change begins with you. So I believe he touched on it by saying that create programs. We do not have to wait for a lot to create a program so that we can join it not have to wait to be employed so that you can start making a difference. A difference begins in your community. Impact your neighbor. Two and daughter one. I call it adopting a kid. Adopting a kid does not mean that a person from you can give knowledge. So begin where you are in your institutions. 
in whichever capacity, whatever makes you weak, let it be the thing that makes you bad. You do not have to hide that light at the until you wait for people to help you. Somebody told me you only get helped by people if you show them what you really stand for. So pick, there are 17 of them, and they are all at the end of the day. 17 matters a lot because they are all interconnected. We cannot have one without two, without three. So just pick one, stick to it, find other people who are doing different things, partner up, come up with something, and then, yeah, take it from there. Let's hear your voice out there. Yeah. Who would like to speak next? Emma, and I'm really passionate about SDG 13, which is climate action. Um, so, as you know, there's been this thing about global warming and climate change, right? And if we don't do something about it, it's really going to catch up with us. At the other day, I was actually reading, and we actually have 12 years to reverse the situation of global warming and climate change. After that, we'll actually be in trouble. So, the main reason I'm standing here is that if anyone is really passionate about taking care of the environment, of which all of us should actually be, you can talk to me. There's actually an organization called Meteor Labs, which if you sign a memorandum of association with them, they can offer trees to, for you so that you guys can get to plant trees in your school. Trees act as carbon seeds. Carbon six means that they absorb carbon dioxide, which will lower the greenhouse gas emission, which contribute to global warming and climate change. So if you'd like to get trees for that sale in order to reduce the impact of global warming and climate change, please see me so that I can connect you to them. Thank you. So that is touching on climate action? Yes. I, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We have you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Nema from Meru County, but I reside in Jambu County and work in Nairobi County. Um, I'm passionate about uh, SDG 3, Good Health and Wellbeing, SDG 5, 4, Quality Education and then five gender equality in 17, which is partnership for the girls. And I run, uh, uh, or I read an organization called Daughters Without Mothers. It's an organization I formed in honor of my late mom because she passed on because of cancer. So I'm passionate about health because we do cancer initiatives, we do medical camps so that we, we give info about the cancers that can be prevented through screening like breast cancer and cervical cancer. We have a very ambitious uh, initiative of ensuring that all the teenage girls get the cervical cancer vaccine. So if you'd like to be part of it, you can talk to me about it. And then edu uh, the theme for this year is International Youth Day is Transforming Education. And I think I listened to the Prime Minister speak yesterday at the forum at the UN and he was saying there is a mismatch of skills. This, and truly that is the reality. There is a mismatch, mismatch of skills that we get through our school process and what is needed in the workplace in the 21st century. So I think as uh, Dio and other speakers have said, we need to to, you know, to come and to find a way to match the skills that are needed with the education that we get. So we need to be active, speak about it, influence, create forums to for people who are behind us so that we can equip them with those skills. Because, for example, myself, I went to school and I did a degree that I have never worked or gotten a job with. But I mean, as I, I had to go and acquire skills that bring bread to my, to my family table every day. So, as Dio said, education, the degree is not important. It's the skills, what can you bring to the table? Then I would like to say something about the SDG 
17. I think the other SDGs that I've mentioned, they always come up first when we talk about SDGs, but people really talk about SDG 17, which is crucial because I believe without SDG 17, we can't achieve the other 16. So there's need for cross country, cross, you know, cross border collaborations. There's need for us to partner from, you know, community leaders, that customer space of yours you're leading with the national policy makers and people from different countries. So I think we should be more active in ensuring that we really create those partnerships so that, you know, I always say, you know, your success does not take away my success. So we need to always have at the back of whatever other goal you're passionate about, keep SDG 17 at the top of the list. See who you can partner with, not just in Kenya, but across the borders, and do something amazing with your life. For the sake of uh, goal five, eh? is there any gentleman who feels? <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't gentlemen taking up? The, it is a concern because that is actually goal five. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, God is good. Oh, oh, yeah. My name is Abhumi Doris Sopolo from Sea County, but I reside in Nairobi County. Um, in my CV, one of the things that stands out clearly is that I'm very passionate about the SDGs. Yes. Um, but I, I'm getting to learn more about SDGs as time goes by. And so I'm here to stand and say that I, I believe in all of them. I believe that they're interconnected and one not one of them is less important and um, because of what I've studied and uh, I don't know why why else I have chosen them, I'm more passionate about goal 3 and goal 4. Um, in my opinion, however, I think that it is the small things that really matter because I, I took public health, I know friends of mine who took public health but we still go around and litter. And every time they do that, they still say, I'm passionate about the SDGs. <laughs> ask myself, is it that we're taking these SDGs as something bigger, something external? And so today I want to challenge each one of us that when it comes to the SDGs, in all those 17 goals that you see, there are small things you can do that makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, which is my recommendation when it comes to all these things, it, I love the theme of today and what we are really targeting on, SDG4, education. And every time I ask myself, when I study about these things, I ask myself, why, how come I didn't get to learn about this in school? And so my recommendation, which I'd like to put across for each one of you to help me about, is that the SDGs should be incorporated into the syllabus. So that we get to learn about them. You know, what you learn about when you're still young, you're bound to carry it more as you go along life than what you just, you know, it's introduced to you when you're all grown. And so I think, what if we teach our children about these goals? What if we teach them that you can actually take one thing and run with it? So that is what I'd um, recommend that uh, we, we actually get to integrate these SDGs and we, we teach about them, and not really only in the academic spaces, but even at home. Your siblings, your nieces, your nephews, tell them about these small things and how they can they make a difference in them. Thank you. I became a coffee channel. I saw your hand first, so please come in front, and after you, we have you. <coughs> Uh, thank you, Guru David. Uh, it's so important for the SDGs among the youth because what I believe is that uh, one thing, sustainability of our development is it will help us as youth, right? Because uh, as long as this world, I don't know what they call this war from the age, we find that, uh, of course, what matters to them is now, right? Because that's what they believe in. But for us, we believe in the future, and uh, this is the way to go sustainability. Of our development that we are handling. And uh, of course, I would like to talk about education. And uh, as a system, of course, everyone is saying that uh, for us, unfortunately, I'm a student, as you must see, the good university of America. And uh, you know, it's so discouraging to hear everyone saying our degrees are useless, right? <laughs> yeah, it's so, it's so discouraging. <laughs> 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 
you are wasting your five years with four years and you know someone is just saying regarding a single space. So it's so unfortunate here yeah, that one thing I believe is this, in our own space as a student, there is much you can do. And uh, what I may say is why our degrees are useless is because we are ignorant about what you are learning in school. And the system is failing us, right? Uh, it's right now that the system is changing, that what is needed in the job market is the skills. Kitambo to go and any papers. You don't have papers. Then, so people are working very hard to get the papers, not getting the skills. So I think uh, for us to have a transformative education, we are really changing the system. Because now people are emphasizing on having the skills other than the papers. And you find that many people in the university and uh, you no know, one colleges and of course the system we are going through. What people are really encouraged is, you know, you say, uh, someone cannot, cannot go to the, uh, to the lecture hall for the whole academic year or for the whole, the whole semester and won't go and sit for the exam. Right? Why? These people are very ignorant. So I believe that, uh, as my sister has said, that uh, this thing needs to be completely the system. That, you know, even in Kenya right now, in the US, we do talk about the vision to that. But how many can talk about what is innovation going to that? People don't understand. It's only the leaders. And I don't, I'm not sure if they know what is innovation going to that. So I'm always sure about that one. Because we only say vision going to that. But do we really understand what, where we want to be as a country? We don't understand. So at the end of the day, there is no way we can be working towards achieving that. So it's very important what she has said to incorporate that in the system to ensure that these people really understand that I'm being molded to be a doctor, but what am I expected so that we can fulfill the vision that that is a country? If you don't understand that, of course I'll be doing that and uh, it's so unfortunate that we work or we study so that we can go to the job market in order to mm -hmm. offer services to get money. That was the system is training us because we talk of youth creating employment, right? So, no of creating job employment or opportunities. But all volunteerism, all these jumping <laughs> we have really money here. I can come and you know champion, but our mind what comes in our mind is money because how will they be able to manage my bills? So we need to actually look at SDG one, right? Yes. Yeah, no, sure. Please your concluding remarks. So what I would like to see as I <laughs> 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 it's very important to undertake and to ensure that our fellow youths or our young ones are fed with where we want us to be so that they can help us achieve that. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. And now you will have to, to speak for two minutes because we are running out of time. Even one. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, my name is Sayer Komondi. And I work with a community-based organization called Generation Gathers in the rural youth in Kitale. Uh, mine is uh, the SDG 5, uh, gender equality. One thing that I believe is uh, every woman and girl uh, must have an opportunity uh, to live free from violence and discrimination. One thing that uh, I would recommend it, uh, such forum like this for the SDG at least should also happen within the rural area because having a space like this within the rural area, because we, we also have youth. The problem is that uh, we are leaving the youth from the rural area to come in the urban with the problem, <laughs> thinking that we are, we are solving the problem, <coughs> but already what if we solve the problem while they are in the rural? So they will be coming probably in the urban area where they have a good information and the right information about maybe seeking for, for the employment and the opportunity. So thank you so much and have a nice day. Hey, good afternoon. Um, my name is Elisha, founder and CEO of Orange Adventures. Uh, Orange Adventures deals with uh, travel and tours. What you say is experiences. Uh, I know our uh, moderator is very tough on the guys, and it's very hard to speak, especially if he's facing you, because he hardly gives you time to speak. Uh, about uh, the SDGs and the rest, uh, having come here today, I'm sure when I, leave, I shall have left this place and not be the same person, because I've learned a lot, and there are young people doing an amazing job. And it's such a big privilege for us to be interconnected and learn and appreciate each other from what you do. 
Uh, on the SDGs, before I go to the SDGs, we have such a beautiful country, and what we do as an organization is set experiences. I believe we cannot appreciate something and then end up cutting it. So having a beautiful country, for us, appreciate it first by experiencing it, then you can never go back to what happened back in the year 2007-2008. So I encourage us, let's appreciate the beautiful country by traveling, transversing through it, and then the rest can be very, very easy. On the SDGs, uh, it's number 17, on matters partnership, because we believe in the power of relationships. Beyond relationships, there's nothing much you can afford. Even, even money, given anything, if you don't have the right relationships or networks, there's, you cannot go very far. I know education has been trashed, especially in the country, and it is very, very worrying. If we have young people who are still undergoing through that same system, they are told that it cannot work. Within my own experience, there's nothing that I've not learned, that I've never been able to put into use. Whatever you're learning now, you'll always, in one way or the other, find some way you can use it. Whether you're taking six years in the university, please don't trash it. <coughs> somehow, somehow, it will always come in handy. But also, don't also just sit back on those papers. Make sure there's something that you use beyond that. As a CEO, working with young people and creating job opportunities for others and looking at how much you can partner. The, my parting shot is one. I know you always know what is it that you want to do. Before you know what you want to do, know why. What is the purpose? And how are you doing it? What impact do you have for it? How is it affecting the environment? We deal with the wild animal and you want to be the voice of the wild animals. Please join us in the voice of conservation because they don't have the voice, but you can be their voice. Otherwise, if they are extinct, then they will they'll have no air to call home. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sylvester Renda, County of Bath is here. Residence is in Nairobi. Interest is all for seven counties. Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I am a founder and a CEO of Yupsa Foundation. It deals with youths and persons with special needs. It's all over the country, even if I can say that. When I look at this thing, I don't just see a circle of colors, good colors, but I see 24 hour clock here. All of us have been two hours in the day. That is 86,400 seconds. You are the one to decide what you want to do with those, with those seconds or those 60 minutes. If you sit with a, a panel of guys who, who can change your life, who can challenge you, better you go. You, you, should, you should have a tendency of challenges. Sit with someone who can challenge you. Is, it, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if I hear from my guys, because today I'm, I've been really challenged in me. Like someone is talking of standard goal development, SDGs, may you say it's TGs. STIs. Sorry. Sorry. My career, my career is my passion. What, what I'm passionate about is what I, what I do as a career. So if you realize your purpose in life, you'll make it. Mm -hmm. So yesterday, a friend of mine called me and told me, I have a great opportunity to give you. You work for, if you work for some few part time on a day, you earn 5,000, 15,000. That's that little way I'm at. <laughs> Just marketing a digital marketing. I told her, no, I need the evidence first yeah. before you tell me that. You cannot earn that. The only thing that you can earn is make bringing your idea into action. Yeah. My recommendation one, and that is the last one, time is conscious, use your time well. One bad chapter of the story is not the end of the story. So live knowing that there's so many things in front of you guys. Thank you. So, if you want to partner with me guys, just come partner. I'll also be having a forum at uh, Accra Hotel on 2017 with the big guys. My name is Leah, again, I'm a champion for SDG, but again, nice to meet you, I'm a KMTC alumni here. Hi. Um, we are talking about education, the theme for this year, International Youth Day. 
and my main focus is about the sex education. Thank you. <laughs> I'm part of a, of a initiative by DNG. It's called Punguza. I know you had or you may scare. But um, so the other time I was in a conversation with some people, and I was the youngest in the group, and I asked them. Why can't we introduce the competence sex education in school? And everyone was, no, 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 I don't know. So I asked them, so how many of you have kids and how many of you have taught your kids about sex? Personally, I was never taught anything. I had to learn from my peers and internet and it's often not the best way to learn. So our aim is to educate kids about sexual education because we are out here talking about abstinence and one thing we can't do right now is we can't sell abstinence to a generation that is already sexually active. So if we have to if you what we are telling them is you have if you have to do it then use protection because as we are shying away from the conversation we have thirty three percent of the new HIV infection being amongst the youth. Why, not it, why are we not talking about it? We need to have this discussion because our aim is to provide skills that will help them to make healthy decisions about this conversation. It's quite, an, um, it's quite a very uncomfortable conversation to have, but it is necessary to talk about sex. You know you have a <laughs> so, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Murago Ahome from Nyeri County, but I reside in Nairobi, Kangware. Uh, my interest is uh, SDG number 16, which is on uh, peace, justice, and strong institutions. So, mine is more of a question where you sit, because I, I want to take those terms in their literal meaning, because when you go deep, you might not have. Uh, the discussion and today, are you at peace with yourself? How many people believe that they are at peace with yourself right now? Thank you. Quite a good number. Uh, what disturbs me, uh, as we were saying, th these SDGs interlink with each other. Uh, we can have peace in terms of ourselves, our personality, peace with other citizens, peace with the environment. And that's where the back stops, peace with the environment. Because you wonder, when you walk in our streets, the streets of uh, Nairobi, it's a pity. When you go to areas like Kangwara, every day you are walking and you are a disturbed man. Reason, the environment is not pleasing. And we, we have this tendency of blaming people in, uh, gov uh, in government, the county government. And we say that Sonko is doing nothing. But it's a very simple question. When you walk outside uh, this building and you see papers, uh, the biscuits, other sweets, did Sonko and his people come and throw the papers there? <laughs> what, what did they? No. Who did? Us. Probably very learned people because in Nairobi they are their lights. <laughs> that it is a disturbing situ uh, situation. Someone eats a sweet, it costs five, five shillings, and he throws the paper. You are not at peace with the environment. The second one is uh, justice. Uh, we know justice in most instances is an elusive term, especially in Kenya, which is a pity. And, uh, but what you can do is to be just to yourself. Be just to yourself. You become just to yourself by eating the sweet. You don't throw the people on the street so that you are at peace with the environment and you did justice to the okay. environment. Uh, the other one, in terms of strong institutions, that one, the only way we can deal with it is if everyone taking responsibility. Uh, we work in different institutions, different places, even in schools. But you're in school, but you're, you're not doing justice, you're not gaining skills. So you're not building a strong in institution. Those of us who are, of us in, in this gathering, who work in the hospitals, our hospitals today, you go there, you are sick, but now, you wonder, are you the one with sick or the hospital itself? <laughs> you are concluding the match. Yes. So, the last thing now, uh, my recommendation is, uh, what self-centered men have destroyed, good upright men can build. 
We may not have gone uh, come a good way, but we have the chance to make a change, right? Yeah. In our own small ways. Thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you, Let's hear from Alvin, and then one of you. <laughs> and then we need to hear from one lady. Back there. Hi everyone. Hi. Hi. I am Alvin Mangirungu. I am passionate about Go3 on health. I work on uh, product health, which means it's more of the information to the young people as well as the services. So it's just to ensure that we we speak about these issues and we go to the hospital, especially as men. Please try and remember when was the last time you went to to speak to a nurse, you know, or, or just anyone about uh, um, your issue. And then also for the uh, for the girls, it's important for us to to ensure that they also have the information as well as the screening of of uh, of um, the issues we're having at the moment, especially the cancers. Um, I heard that we have the, the vaccine that was spoken about. It's important we get um, the information on it and ensure that all the girls and us, we receive it. And um, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm Kelvin Wanzala, at KU. I'm here to speak on uh, two things. One, uh, quality education. Two, good health and well-being. Now, we cannot talk about good health and well-being if you don't talk about education. You cannot come tell me about good health when I, I don't understand what you're talking about. So first of all, you need to, to first of all have a way on how we can improve our education as a country. In a country where uh, PhDs are being scrapped off because they are fake and they're not worth the market, telling a child who, who's watching the news with you that you need to learn and go for PhD, that child will not even see the sense in that. So we need to find out our own how we can uh, uh, kind of change the mentality of this child, of this kid, at home, as a parent, as a person. So that's why we have an organization that uh, is dealing with uh, a way on how we try to motivate this child on how they could value this education and also how they could make it out there and do whatever is worth for them. So as if I empower this person with the knowledge and skills, then very well I can talk about good well uh they're gonna I can talk about uh, the good health and the well being of the person. But without education then all the SDGs we cannot even achieve them. We first of all have to make sure that we impart good knowledge and skills in these people so as they can help us in achieving all the goals. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Nice. <laughs> and then one last lady who will finish us. Uh, good evening. Good evening. I'm Calvin and I would like to talk about uh, call number seven because this has not been touched. Uh, we are talking about affordable and clean energy and when we talk about clean energy of course it's renewable energy and this thing affects the environment, it affects also our health. Uh, I work for an organization that run, uh, runs a program for women in energy and basically what we try to do is to get the rural women to drop the fossil fuel or the firewood, use of firewood because we've seen that from the firewood we are having cases of uh, I mean health, I mean in health issues. We are having problem with our our our, our lungs, lungs. So we want to educate people to drop the, the issue of fossil energy to clean energy. And also, this is important to us youth. We've seen the what has been going on, especially the, the coal conversation. This is something that affects us, and we should endeavor to, uh, I mean, to stop that thing from being implemented as much as we're trying to look for energy to, I mean, to industrialize, being one of the big four agendas. So that's exactly what I want to talk about. And it's equally connected to climate change. So whenever we are having coal, it means we are going to have uh, uh, much gases being emitted and the green effect will be, it will be really bad for us. So I think we should try and see what we can do on 
affordable and clean energy. Thank you so much. This is the golden opportunity for you to close up for us. Good afternoon. We want by next year on World, Environment, World Forest Day, that is 21st March, we break the world record for tree planting. Uh, the one in Africa currently is Ethiopia, which happened last week. They planted 350 million trees in a day. So we are planning by that time, we have gained enough people, enough partnerships to actually break that record. Mm -hmm. So I think it's been a very interesting session. I wish we had more time to uh, engage more and speak about what we can do for, for the SDGs. However, we intend to organize other forums here in Nairobi and also in other regions such as Nakuru and Mombasa and also other regions. That is why we are beginning with um, home. Nairobi is home for <laughs> some of us. So we hope to be able to come to the rest of the regions which we've had you guys coming from. And when you go back to your regions, please make sure you are speaking about uh, SDGs and enlightening other young people to actually do something for sustainable development. I thank you all for coming and for being willing to share with each other and engage and being willing to make a difference in the community. To the big game of Asante Sana. So we shall um, share with you the pictures from this event on our page on our Facebook page so you can access them from there and also this conversation was live so you might go and trace it on our page and also feel free to contact any one of us um, the most straightforward way is through those platforms that we shared and also there are people who signed up for this initiative to be members sometimes back and we haven't gotten back to you, we haven't forgotten. So this forum is the beginning of <coughs> now actually following up everything and making sure that everything is running. So in the next few um, weeks, we'll be able to actually do more and I look forward to your partnerships and commitment in, in doing something for young people of our country.